Hi, I'm Alejandro Duarte from Vadin, and for this community answer, I wanted to do an introduction to Vadin 10, or more specifically to Vadin Flow. Uh, this is based in a webinar we did in Spanish a couple of weeks ago, and there's been a lot of people asking if I could do it in English. So let's get started. Let's begin with what is Vadin. So Vadin is, first of all, a Finnish company uh, with offices in Finland, of course, and um, the US and Germany. Uh, it's been around for uh, more or less 15 years and uh, has a lot of experience in web technologies and web development. Uh, but Varin is also an open source platform that simplifies web application development. So starting uh, with Vadin 10, we offer a platform with several parts. Uh, the applications you can build with the platform are like this, uh, where you combine UI components and um, these are visualized in a browser. All these components uh, are mobile first, which means that they are going to be rendered uh, optimally in uh, mobile devices as well. So let's see uh, the four main parts of the platform. First of all, we have a set of web components. These are uh, HTML elements that you can use in any HTML document, even without any framework at all. Uh, the second part of the platform is a Java framework. This allows you to use the uh, web components, but uh, uh, using the Java programming language. No need to, to code any HTML or JavaScript at all. Uh, the third part of the platform is a set of productivity tools such as Test Bench that allows you to test Vadin applications uh, applications more easily, and uh, the Vadin Designer, which allows you to drag and drop the components into a canvas so you can see how the application look like um, or would look like. And the fourth uh, part of the platform, the Vadin platform is a set of starters. These are project templates that you can use to easily get started. So uh, we're going to focus on the Java part of uh, this platform, which is a Java framework and it's called Vadin Flow. So how do you use Vadin Flow? Here you have the typical Hello World application developed with Vadin Flow. As you can see, it's just a class and uh, it uses the API of Vadin Flow to define the UI. Uh, this class can be compiled and packaged into a WAR file and then deployed to any servlet container such as Tomcat Jetty, Classfish, Wildfly, or WebLogic. And when you run the application and uh, request it from a web browser, uh, it would look like this one here. So let's go through the code. First, you see that this class, the Hello World class, is annotated with the annotation, with this annotation route. Uh, there, you can specify the URL that the user has to to uh, put in the browser in order to see this Hello World view. You can have as many of these as, as you want. Um, the UI itself is uh, formed by a text field, a button. And they are added into a vertical layout. So notice how the Hello World class extends vertical layout. This means that when we use the add method, the components are going to be shown as like in a column. Um, also, the way we add behavior to this application is by using event listeners. Uh, in this example, we are using a click listener for the button uh, and uh, defining a lambda expression. That uses uh, the same add method from the vertical layout to add a new span component into the UI. And it also uses the value of the text field. Uh, in this case, in this example, is John Doe. And um, yeah, so it's that simple how you can create a, a UI using uh, Vadin Flow. So how can we create a new project with Vadin Flow? Well, the easiest way is to go uh, to vadin.com slash start and select one of the starters. Uh, depending on your needs, uh, you can integrate with uh, other technologies as well. But in the end, uh, Vadin Flow is just a dependency you drop into your web application, into your Java uh, web project. Um, 
uh, be sure that the, make sure that you check the latest version from the website. Uh, at the time of recording this video, it's 10.0.0 uh, release candidate three, so it should be very similar to the final version. Uh, you will need also the Servant API, of course, 3.1 uh, or later. And if you're planning to uh, deploy to a production environment, you will need the Vadin Maven plugin, which uh, allows you to, to, or makes your application um, usable in older browsers that are not compatible with modern technologies. It also optimizes the size of the uh, client side engine. But let's see all this uh, in a more practical way through a demo. So let me show you what we are going to do. I have a sketch here of a, a comment system, a very, very simple one. I have an image here, I have a table with all the comments. This is going to be a grid in the flow terms. We have an area here, a text area, to type some new comment and then a button to send this comment to the uh, database and, and, and also to show it here. Uh, so uh, first step is uh, value the console like start and select project base. These are the starters. You will need to use uh, uh, to configure a, a name for your project. I'm going to use Vadin demo. Click download, est extract this zip file, and you'll see that this is just a Maven project that you can import. If I can drag it here. Uh, into any IDE. I'm going to use IntelliJ IDEA. You can, of course, use Net, NetBeans or Eclipse if you want. So um, let me uh, enter the presentation mode. And let's see what the starter generated for us. So first of all, we have two classes here. Main view that can be seen like um, the entry point of the application if you want. Uh, it has a route annotation here. There is uh, an empty string, which means that you can access this uh, uh, using the, the root context. Uh, it uses some components and some custom components. For example, this example template is, is here. And if you have a look at this file, it imports somehow. Let's not go through the details, but uh, it imports uh, an HTML file. This is a, uh, an optional um, feature of the framework. It allows you to define the, like the components also in HTML in a template. We are not going to use these actually. So I, I'm actually going to remove all the code here. Even this command, I don't want to um, use uh, much space for this. And uh, since we have removed that, we can remove this class and also the uh, HTML itself. This is optional. This is just to show that, that you can do it. This one here, shared styles, that HTML. I'm gonna leave that there. I'm going to use it later and, and you'll see how you can style your application. But yeah, so at this point we have a very simple project with uh, the most important part is this main view class. So uh, let's continue by adding some dependencies that, that we're going to need. I'm going to use a uh, hibernate with JPA. So I'm adding this uh, two dependencies, hibernate and an H2 database. Of course, you can use My MySQL or Postgres or any other database. And the second thing I need to do is to create a file inside meta inf persistence.xml. I want to check that it's correct, yeah. And you have to define a persistence unit here. I have it ready so we don't uh, spend much time writing all this code. The important thing here is that I'm defining a persistence unit with this name, demo PU, that connects to, uh, to an H2 database, which is in my hard drive. So it's not an in-memory database. Mm, it's a file-based database. All right. Uh, now let's uh, code part of the back end of this application. So first I need something that allows me to use JPA. I call this uh, JPA service. Again, I, I coded this before so we didn't uh, waste too much time in JPA stuff. Uh, but here I have an entity manager factory which is uh, initialized statically. 
and uh, using the demo persistence unit that we created previously. There is also a method to run or that allows me to easily run queries in a in the transaction. We are going to use this later. And uh, yeah, so the next step is uh, to create an entity. Again, I have this I have this ready. Uh, uh, the class comment since it, this is a comment system. It's an entity, a JPA entity that corresponds to the comment table uh, or SQL SQL table. It has an ID which is uh, auto generated. The content of the comment, the date it was uh, done, uh, the date is initialized here in the constructor to the current date, and there is also another constructor to create a new comment with this content. The rest is just uh, getters and setters. And the other thing we want to do here is a repository class. It's like a service class that, uh, in this case, I implemented this uh, with static methods, uh, find all, that returns all the comments in the in the um, database, and uh, another method to save a comment. Uh, this class uses the um, JPA service class and this method that I created before. Uh, this is basic uh, JPA. If you are using Spring or uh, Jakarta, you would do it uh, in a very different way. You need to, to for example, code this, this class at all. Right. So uh, we have kind of the back end, we can say. But, but the cool thing about Vardin Flow is that the UI is also here. It's also in the... Uh, it's, it's just next to the other classes. Uh, that means we can we don't, we don't have to expose, for example, this repository through a REST service or anything. We can just call the methods here directly. Um, so that's that's a, a very uh, interesting uh, feature of the framework. So let's start now with uh, more Vadin flow stuff. Uh, the first thing I would like to do is to add this image. I have this file here ready. I'm just going to copy it to the project inside web app front end where all the static resources should be. But I'm going to create a new directory for this. So this is the, the image. I just copied the the path to it. And uh, now we can start using the API of Vadin Flow. So let's create a new image from this package. And it accepts the source where the file is should have copied the whole path. Yep. And the alt string, uh, for example, logo. And we can assign these to a new variable. Uh, with, with this image, we can set, for example, the width, let's say uh, 300 pixels. And um, we can add now this component into this vertical layout. So that is add image and uh, that's it so we can run this using maven and the uh, GT uh, plugin like that but the starter uh, well they started created or added these uh, 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 this plugin into the pomx.xml file I'm going to do it uh, from the ID so I can use uh, shortcuts it's basically the same this is just inside the ID Basically, so I can use uh, shortcuts, uh, keyboard shortcuts to to run the application. Uh, I'm going to run it in uh, debug mode in case we need to debug something. And uh, I'm using JRevel, so I don't have to restart the server many times. There is a, a free alternative to JRevel. If you, you you can check the uh, uh, blog at vadincom slash blog. But yeah, so the, the server is started. Let's request the application from the browser and see if it works. It works. So there's that's the image we added. Let's add more components to this. I'm going to add to create them as um, class fields this time. So first I'm going to start with a grid. This is like a table and it's parameterized with the type of data you want to show. We want to show comments. So comment here. Uh, let's call this grid and create a new instance. We also want to add a text area. 
component, create a new instance, and we need a button as well. So also, I should also create a new instance. And here we're going to specify the text inside the button, for example, send the new, new comment. Uh, now we can add these uh, components into the vertical layout in the, in the same call. So text area, or actually grid first, text area and button. All right, before we uh, run the application or before we uh, compile it, let's configure some of these uh, components. So for the grid, I would like it to be, or its height should be determined by the number of rows it contains, all right? For text area, I'd like it to use as much uh, space as possible horizontally. And for the button, I would like it to be aligned to the right in the layout. That's in the layout, so we need to, to use a method from here that's set horizontal layout, uh, actually uh, set horizontal component alignment, and you specify the alignment. This is alignment dot end and uh, the component you want to align. This is using uh, flexbox terminology if you are wondering. So yeah, we have configured these uh, three components. Let's see if they look as uh, like we uh, like we wanted. So it works. Uh, this line here is a grid. Uh, there are no rows, so that's the reason it's shown as, as like, like this because we said that we want it to be the height of it should be uh, determined by the number of rows, which there are none. Uh, this is the uh, text area on the button that at the moment doesn't do anything. So we need to do that to uh, implement some behavior here, and we also need to add two things: columns and rows. So let's start with that. So columns, as simple as add a column. And you can see uh, there are many versions of this uh, method. The one I like is this one that receives uh, something called value provider. Uh, the cool thing is that I can do something like this. Comment get date. So I can specify any getter here. And that means that for each row that we are going to add later, uh, and for this column, the this grid component is going to call uh, is going to show whatever it's returned in this uh, by this uh, method. And we can do exactly the same for the actual content of the of the comment. Cool. So we have columns now. Let's add now rows and. I'd like to do this in a separate uh, method. Let's create this update method. And that's also very simple. So rows are items in the terminology of the grid. And uh, this receives either a collection or an, an array or a stream of comments. Um, so we can use a repository that find all, which uh, this uh, returns a collection. So now we have columns and rows. Cool. Um, the button, the button. Let's add behavior to the button. That means adding a click listener. And we can implement this as, or with the uh, lambda expression here. And I'm going to create a new method also. Uh, let's call it send. And let's uh, specify what uh, and the, the, the content of the comment that's whatever it's inside the text area so I need the value in the text area of course it's that this doesn't exist so let's create it this is the content and uh, this is uh, very easy also uh, we have the comment repository that save and we just create a new comment with this content so when the user clicks the button, uh, we call this method, it saves this into the database or in the database and, but we are not doing anything with the UI. So we need to uh, kind of refresh the grid. And since we have this method, I'm just going to call it from here. 
And also I would like uh, whatever the value is uh, inside this text area, I would like it to be removed from there. So we used here get value, what we needed uh, the opposite kind of. So set value and an empty string. Now there is a shortcut for this, which is clear. Cool. So I think if I didn't make any mistakes, this should work now. Let's try it out. Let's try to type a new comment here. Yeah, it works. So the date and the content of the comment. Cool. So the next thing I would like you to uh, to learn is uh, how to integrate a new component that is not in the core of Vadin. So for example, let's say uh, we wanted something more sophisticated than this uh, text area. So I would recommend you always go first to vadin.com slash directory and uh, and uh, uh, check whether there is an existing component for Vadin 10. So click this option here, and maybe there is something uh, uh, ready for Vadin uh, flow. If not, you can check also, for example, web components. But moreover, you can go anywhere else and 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 try to find a, a custom element. Here, I'm going to get a, a web component from webcomponents.org. It's called Monaco editor. If this uh, shows it, yeah. So this is pretty interesting because it's used by a Microsoft Visual Studio, and uh, well, it's uh, I'm interested in this element here, Monaco editor. Uh, as you can see, it is it's, uh, an HTML element. So first thing we need to do is uh, to uh, download this this component. So I'm going to copy the Bower uh, command there and uh, well, keep in mind you need to move to source main web app front end. This directory paste the command there. You need to install Bower. This is just to download uh, kind of uh, static resources. That's it. You need to learn much about Bower. Uh, just keep in mind that it, it creates uh, a new Bower components directory here in the web app front end. And inside this, uh, it, uh, Bower is going to put all the web components that you install. Uh, particularly, in, uh, we see the Monaco editor, and these are dependencies. So, this uh, this element or web component needs all of these uh, uh, resources as well. And if you have a look at what's inside Monaco editor, you'll see that there's small, it's mostly um, HTML and uh, JavaScript. So. We don't want to use uh, uh, JavaScript or HTML, we want to use Java. So let's create a Java class called Monaco Editor. You can call it whatever you want. The important thing is to uh, use the tag annotation and specify the name of the HTML element, which is Monaco Editor. And also you need to import the HTML that defines this uh, uh, Monaco Editor. Uh, web component. Uh, it is this file, so I'm going to copy the the route to that the, or the path to that file. With this annotation, you shouldn't specify front end here. And last thing you need to do to make this a uh, uh, Vadin component. Right now, it's just a, a class. It's not actually a Vadin component. You need to extend, for example, component. Uh, since we are extending component, we can uh, right now replace it here, which that, that was the idea to replace this text area with the Monaco editor. So you, uh, there are compilation errors that we're going to fix in a moment, but this one is not a compilation error. So you can see that this new uh, type is accepted here, of course. I'm going to put uh, or rename these to Monaco editor. And uh, let's fix the, the compilation error. So this is not implemented. There is no set with method. Uh, this is very easy to implement, actually. There is a default method in has size that contains set width and set height. And 
there is also get value doesn't exist and clear I'm going to start with uh, this one clear so let's implement the method here and what we need is to we need to get a Java representation of this kind of a low-level uh, representation if you want of these uh, uh, HTML uh, element and set its value so if you go to documentation of the of the web component you'll see that what it's inside the the editor is uh, configured with this property so again we need to get a Java uh, representation of this element and then set this property and that's very easy since this is a component we can call get element so we have this now and now we need to set the property so again there is a method for that the property we are interested in is value and we specify an empty string since this is clear uh, I know this component uh, needs uh, uh, a value for this property so I'm going to call the um, uh, clear method from the constructor to make sure the, there, there is at least an empty string defined for this uh, so this is uh, fixed or implemented and the other one is get value so it's kind of similar to to this instead of uh, setting the property we need to uh, get the property so get element get property and the property is value now there is uh, another detail we need to fix here and it, it is uh, related to the following uh, this property changes in the browser but this element doesn't know anything about uh, Java frameworks or and, and particularly nothing about Vadin flow right so we need to do something to inform uh, Vadin flow or or the server to update its uh, Java representation let's call it like that whenever this changes now if we go to the uh, events uh, the documentation for the events when we will see a value change event that it's fire when the value property changes it's just what we need so with value flows as easy as using the synchronize annotation specify the name of the event and with this it's going to keep uh, the the server um, server side um, updated whenever this is called right so now this compiles let's compile the project and and see if it works so it seems to be working so this is the editor it has some auto complete features and and well uh, of course it doesn't make sense to to have a, a code editor for a command system but anyway it's just an example and let's see if this works yeah it works so get value works and set value works also because now it's empty uh, so yeah uh, this is how you can integrate an existing existing uh, web component and uh, let's jump into the last part of this video which is how to customize a little bit the look and feel of this application so remember I said I, I was going to keep this here well that's the file you have to use to modify the styles and it's uh, uh, you can do it with CSS so here's an example already of some CSS I'm going to remove it from now uh, you need this uh, notation because we are styling um, web components and web components have something called shadow DOM so in order to style that shadow DOM we have to use this notation so let's create a selector for example and you can use any CSS rules here uh, but the cool thing about volume flow is that it comes with uh, a theme called lumo and it contains in turn a set of variables that you can use to uh, modify the styles more uh, easily because uh, it will change for example the border color or fonts uh, of all the uh, components so of the buttons text fields and uh, checkboxes all of these components are going to take this these new values so uh, and that's pretty cool and I have an example here so I'm changing the the, fam the font family I'm making the things a, a little bit more rounded and I'm changing the 
background color to a different kind of white and also changing the primary color to another kind of blue and uh, I just need to refresh here I think yeah as you can see the font is different now this is rounded and it's blue uh, you can also add styles to your own uh, components so this is we created this so let's add a CSS class name for example main view I'm going to copy this and I'm going to compile because th that was a Java file and now we can uh, just create a selector here for for that uh, class name and change for example we can add some uh, shadow so I'm going to define it like this and um, sorry and I think it's the color that goes here so 0.3 for the alpha value we can change the background color to something like I know this and we can set the max width of uh, um, 600 pixels we can also specify a margin TM we can also specify a padding for example so those styles are going to be applied only to the uh, the main view we defined it there and as you can see now we have some shadows and a different color and padding and margin for these components so I think that's what I uh, wanted to show you in this video I hope you enjoyed it and uh, let me know what kind of topics you would be interested uh, in and um, uh, thanks for watching see you next time